If you enjoy the earlier years of PC gaming, you may find yourself wanting to get a computer to play those games on instead of using an emulator such as DOSBox. But this brings up the question as old as computers themselves. Do you build or buy? Now, since the PC standard has been around for nearly 40 years, it can be difficult to know what kind of parts you need to build a computer to play those games. There are a lot of parts options out there that make it a daunting task. You need to start by choosing an appropriate CPU for the types of games you want to play. And then you need to pick a motherboard, and RAM, and a video card, and a power supply, and a floppy drive, and a hard drive, and cables, and maybe a CD drive, but oh wait, that's scuzzy, and the complexity of the build just keeps growing. So for the majority of people, building a computer is going to be complicated and expensive, and the option of buying a computer is going to be better, and there isn't much better of a way of buying a computer than a laptop. It's small, compact, functional, everything's set up and connected in the way it needs to be, and they're usually quite affordable. Although these aren't two particularly great examples of affordable, the Gateway Liberty 2000 here is unobtainium, and the ThinkPad 365 XD, for some reason unbeknownst to me, can sell for up to $300 on eBay. But you could easily find computers like these for more real-world prices. Now these two computers represent what I think is the most important decision you will have to make when choosing a laptop. Do you go for a 486 or a Pentium? Going with a 486 laptop will give you pretty robust DOS and Windows 3.1.1 compatibility, although you will run into problems running some much older games that are expecting an 8088 as it will run too fast. But almost any computer is going to have that problem that isn't an early 80s luggable. Now if you're going with a Pentium era laptop, you're going to further decrease your compatibility with DOS games but you will get compatibility with Pentium games. But you can take this to the next step and get a Pentium laptop with a 3D accelerator card, but then you're getting into Windows 98 games, and that's not really the point of this. So the choice between a Pentium laptop and a 46 is really going to depend on what exact era of games you want to play. I think most people are going with 46 laptops because it seems more DOS-like, and it feels like it's going to be more compatible with stuff. There's also a little bit of romanticizing going on with the 486, and people just seem to like it more. Now there is one pretty significant advantage about the Pentium era laptops that I've left out so far, and that is sound. You aren't going to be able to find a 486 laptop with sound, so the best it's going to be able to muster is PC speaker. Now despite that, which is a pretty significant thing, people still seem to be drawn to 46 laptops. Even I have to agree with this, and as soon as I got this 46 laptop, I found myself searching for a way of adding sound to it. Which led me on a quest that lasted over a year to try and get this. A Micro Solutions Backpack CD drive with sound. Now before we open this, I want to take a look at a few other ways something similar to this has been done. In the era, there were parallel port connectable sound cards, such as the Disney Sound Source or the Kovax Speech Thing. More recently, there's also been the OPL to LPT adapter. Unlike the other two sound solutions I mentioned, which require support to be natively included in the game, the OPL2 to LPT adapter allows you to use any game that was AdLib compatible. All you have to do is run a program to redirect AdLib access, or change the program to access the AdLib card over the parallel port. Now the OPL2 to LPT adapter is originally based on a project that mounted an ISA bus directly to a parallel port to use with an original AdLib card. The AdLib card is an 8-bit sound card, and the parallel port is an 8-bit interface. So it was very possible to make an AdLib card work over the parallel port. Now, that's great for older games that used AdLib. Newer games tend to use Sound Blaster cards, and while there were 8-bit Sound Blaster cards, those were more geared towards music. What you really want when you want a Sound Blaster for games is a Sound Blaster 16, a 16-bit ISA slot sound card. Now, this cannot be easily connected to a parallel port because it has twice as many interface pins so it hasn't really been possible to make an adapter for that. So the fact that Backpack was able to fit a 16-bit sound card on the 8-bit parallel port is what made this thing so tantalizing and why I've been trying to get one for so long. Well, 
Actually, I haven't been trying to get that. I've been trying to get one of these with sound, which also exists. The thinner, later model that more easily fits in a laptop bag. Now I bet I've missed some of these on eBay that had the 16-bit sound option because it seems people only take pictures of the front, bottom, and the back when the sound connections are on the side. These two extra connections would be for audio in and audio out, but I've never seen one of these available for sale with the 16-bit sound. So I was just happy to get any of them with the sound option, even if it was the larger desktop size drive. Which, despite their claims of being portable, I'm going to argue because I've never had a laptop bag that would hold something this large easily enough. So yeah, I'm calling this a desktop only model. I don't care what the box says. Now what you get in the box with the drive is about what you would expect. A cable, a manual and drivers, a power supply, and of course the drive itself. Mine just happened to also come with some documents detailing an RMA process for it, and some new beta drivers that I don't think were ever officially released for OS2 Warp. By the time you've seen this, I've already imaged all these and put them up somewhere for you to download. So if you want to check those out, go ahead, but I'm not going to be looking at those in this video. And here we finally have the CD drive itself, with the sound card connections on the back. A little interesting fact about the sound card inside of here is that while you could obviously get it integrated into the CD drive like this when you bought the CD drive, you could also get the CD drive without the sound card in there and you would have a blank metal plate back here. You could then buy the sound card as an upgrade for your CD drive and install it yourself, which means if we open it up, we can actually get a look at the sound card and take it out. Now as we take this out of here, not only can we see that this was a sound card connected to the parallel port bus, the internal sound card's actually connected to the IDE channel that the CD drive is on. So it's a 16-bit parallel port sound card connected to an IDE adapter. This thing is weird! And now that it's out of the CD drive, we can see what's going on in here. So we have what is a PC speaker, so we can have that emulated. We have a gal chip that's just going to be doing some basic logic conversion all the requisite ports for input and output and a volume control knob and at the heart of everything we have an audio drive chipset sound chip an es 1688f this is going to be a sound blaster compatible chip which is what allows it to be a 16-bit sound card it's still very strange that it's connected to a parallel port over an isa bus to finally be here though I think someone missed the memo here on what a TO220 screw mount is uh, actually for. Alright, I think I've kept you waiting for long enough, so let's get this thing connected to and installed on the 486 laptop. The driver installation process is pretty unspectacular, so we'll just go ahead and fast forward through that. And on to the first boot up. Oh, and there we have it. It works. That's, uh, that's good, right? We're done now? It works? You don't need to see games, right? Do you? Alright, here's where we get to the real problem with this thing and why everyone isn't using one of these for their old 46 laptops. Let's take a look at the manual for a moment. If we look in the manual, we'll find installation instructions for Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 but no mention of DOS, because the sound portion of the CD drive is not compatible with DOS. But the back of the box clearly states the system requirements are only DOS 3.1, a DOS-compatible computer, and that DOS and Windows device drivers are included. But all of that is just for the CD drive, not the sound portion. Matter of fact, it makes all these bold claims, and nowhere on the box does it state that the sound portion of this device is only compatible with Windows. Now, Windows applications do work just fine on this. But if you attempt to configure something like Doom to use a sound blaster, all of the requisite settings, and try and launch the game, you will see that nothing happens at all sound-wise.
and it's really a shame that the drivers are Windows only, because it means that the Pentium era PC, with its integrated sound card and capability of using it in DOS, makes for a better DOS gaming PC with sound. Now all that's not to say, there aren't some great games that fall in the cross-section of stuff that will still run on a 486, but requires Windows 95. It's just that for pre-Pentium laptops, this CD drive with a soundboard crammed in there doesn't really do enough to warrant getting one. Now let's say you're a crazy person who knows the limitations of this device before you buy it, like I actually did, and you still want one of these. Well. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this thing can actually do. Now on the bottom left here we have a CD audio output. That is a legacy output because of the CD drive nature of this. The CD audio is passed through the other audio ports so you don't need to connect anything to that. We have an aux in which is kind of a relic of a bygone era that um, just passes an audio source through to the outputs so you can Use that if you want, there's no real reason. If you were uh, had this thing connected to some kind of MIDI synthesizer, I don't know how, then I guess you could pass audio from that <laughs> through into here. But the, again, it's a parallel port, sound card, there's no MIDI output. Anyway, continuing. We have a microphone recording input, a line in recording input, line out, which is not controlled by the volume knob, and a speaker output, which is controlled by the volume knob. Now the speaker inside I mentioned earlier is not actually a PC speaker, it is just an internal speaker effectively connected to the speaker output on here. The volume knob controls the volume of the internal speaker and the volume of that output. We have the connection to the computer, a connection to a printer, not a floppy drive like my sub notebook uses because the Parallel port is merely a connector with a bunch of pins as far as that's concerned, so keep that in mind if you're going to use something like this. I cannot use the floppy drive and this at the same time without a switch box. We have an 18 volt AC power supply, although I've read that you can put a DC power supply into it of an equivalent voltage. I have not tested that and will not be testing that because that sounds a bit scary to me. And we have a flip power switch for turning the unit off and on. Now the CD drive itself is very unremarkable. It is only a two times speed drive, so it's going to feel very slow. The slim drives are much better if you just need to add a CD drive to one of these old computers. That's a 24 speed drive, so it's just gonna blow away this thing and fit in a bag much more conveniently. Matter of fact, if you just need a CD drive, I very much recommend the slim drives over one of the big drives. They're very common and affordable to get. I haven't paid more than $20 for one of these. Matter of fact, they're so easy to get, I've accidentally acquired two of them. From what I've used these, they're very reliable. Neither of these are broken, and they're just faster. They're better. One of these slim drives with a sound option is still something I want to get, even though I know it's useless. I'm going to have one of these in my laptop bag since this sub notebook doesn't have a CD drive. So why not have one with the sound option for the limited times I do want to play a Windows 95 game that runs on a 486? Now I haven't had any problems with sampled sounds from this, those sound just fine. The CD audio is nice and crisp, no skipping, and the MIDI's alright. Let me go ahead and put in the Windows 95 version of Doom 2 and do some direct capture of that so you can hear what the MIDI sounds like clearly. <laughs> So yeah, the MIDI sounds alright, but if we go into control panel, we can take a look at some of the settings for the backpack, and we can go into configure sound, and here we have a very interesting option to use OPL3. Now I don't know about you, but I didn't see an OPL3 chip on that board when we took a look at it. So it must be doing some kind of OPL3 emulation. Well, let's check out how that sounds.
So yeah, that's clearly OPL3 emulation on the backpack. That's pretty cool for, you know, all those ad-lib games for Windows 95. Still though, nice to have. Well, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover about the sound-enabled backpack CD drive. When this thing was relevant, it would have been really awesome to be able to add sound to a computer like this. I mean, you would have been using Windows 95 as your daily driver operating system to do Word, Excel, you know, all that stuff. You could play music files through it. It's, it would have been very useful. Nowadays, though, we see this and we want it for games, and it's just not there for the majority of games that you would want to play on this computer because of the lack of DOS support. And the Windows 95 support really is just going to be better off with a Pentium laptop. So, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and hunt one of these down just for a 486 laptop. But if you stumble upon one, you know, it might be worth checking out. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.